Hey everybody, it is I, your friendly neighborhood survivor guy, Gordon Holmes, here with your Survivor Exit interview with the winner of Survivor 43, Gabler. <laughs> How did that happen? Well, mind blowing. Still can't, still cannot believe it. Um, very excited to talk to him. We'll have the rest of the final five uh, free tomorrow, but Gabler tonight. Um, if you have any comments, questions, comments, uh, the comment section is open. Let us know what you thought about the jury's voting, what you thought about that wacky season 44 trailer. Um, wow. Um, also, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Um, it, it does us a huge favor, gets us in front of more people. It'll get those final five interviews right in front of you. Also, we're going to be doing things during the off season you're not going to miss. And also, seeing that number go up makes my little heart all a flutter. Gets me all giddy. Um, yeah, and uh, maybe I'm stalling, uh, but we got to get into it. With that being said, let's see what Gabler has to say about the shock of the century. Hey, what's up, Gordon? How you doing, man? Gabler, I got to tell you, I've been doing this for a long time, and I only have one rule, and that is a man who puts palm fronds on his tribe mates when they're trying to sleep cannot possibly win Survivor. <laughs> well, I'm glad to prove you wrong, man, <laughs> because palm fronds are all about love. That's all I can say. <laughs> Oh man, I I I I I will admit, uh, Gabler, I wrote you off at the merge. Um, I saw somebody who was sure. so passionate about taking out Ellie uh, for for you know uh, she had been lying to you, but it seemed like the slide of digging into your bag. I'm like, he's playing a little too emotionally. I can't see him going all the way. So, kudos. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. But yeah. you know, wearing my heart on my sleeve, uh, being very transparent was very disarming to my other castaways because I I was who I was and they could count on me and it allowed me to have multiple alliances there was really nobody I wasn't aligned with and that helped me out a lot especially you know I had more ways to get to three than anyone at the merge yeah I, I gotta tell you and as we you know Survivor seems to be trying to, to surprise us a little more with the edit. I, I feel like there's there's things we're not seeing. But I noticed, during, I interviewed everybody as they come out of the game, and each person loves Gabler. So then I was like, oh, maybe we're, maybe I'm reading this the wrong way, where it, it felt like you had goat potential, someone that could be dragged along and not receive any yeah. votes, that somebody who could genuinely win over a jury. So in hindsight, maybe it isn't as surprising as we seem to be making it out to be. No, and that's fair. And the edit itself, uh, which I actually liked, I thought the edit was uh, was was generous to everybody involved. I thought it was, it was as a Survivor fan first, which is what I am. I appreciated the holes in the in the story because it allowed me and you and everybody that's a fan to add their theory and to pontificate on well. This could happen, but this could happen too. And it was fun, right? It was a lot of fun. And then the, also parts of the story, right? It's like a roller coaster. Tick, 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 which is kind of slow. Tick, 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 tick. And the longer it ticks, you know, at some point it's going to go down and it's going to be a, a dramatic crash. And while they were late in the season in 43, they were big and they were dramatic. Yeah. But even, even like uh, looking at, at tonight's finale, Cassidy herself, uh, she had a choice between you making fire or Owen making fire, and she was worried that if Owen beat Jesse, that would be a little too good for her re his resume. And she wasn't worried about your resume. She w wasn't worried if you were the one. She was worried that you weren't physically able to do it, you know, due to lack of nutrition. Um, so he, she didn't even seem to, seem to see it coming. You know, um, Gordon, throughout the whole season, I was underestimated early, middle, and late. And that's okay. It can play to my advantage. I don't need to. I was humble enough to play that guy. If they wanted me to be like that guy that, you know, yeah, I'm part of your alliance, I'm part of your boat, but I'm not really a threat. Hiding in plain sight. That was one of the things we talked about, you know, in a couple of seasons. One of the seasons was named, one of the shows was named after it. It's really the truth. So even though I was there, people were looking around at bigger threats. I kept my threat level low and I almost blew it early on because at the merge, I really pushed hard for the, the Ellie vote. And then I won the first individual immunity in dramatic fashion. And, you know, Alec Gabler was on the shore snapping around everywhere. And I had to go back in the water and go under for a while because, you know, if you stay on the high threat level, you become a target. And I was able to manage that pretty well throughout the game. And, you know, I remember talking to Cassidy when we were down to final four, but she's a stud, by the way, total stud. And, you know, I remember sitting there, I was, I was hacking on a coconut 
Owen and Jesse were talking to her about strategy, about how to do take who and do what. And I just looked at her and I, I said, Cassidy, you it's your call because it's your decision. You earned it. But you put me up against anyone on this beach and I'll take out your opponent. You tell me, you put anyone in front of me on fire, I'll take them out. And, you know, she had me actually audition for her. So <laughs> I had to make a fire in front of her, not once, but twice, so that she was like, okay, okay, he can do it. And then after, after that, um, she decided Jesse was the biggest threat, which I think was a smart move by her. And she put me there uh, to make fire. And, you know, she, she, she could have done it herself, maybe. But, you know, she had three immunity wins and she's played a great game. I don't think it's a necessarily a bad decision by her um, to do that. I, I got to tell you, Gabler, I don't know if I could brush my teeth in four minutes and nine seconds. Like that was right. Uh, mind blowing. Um, uh, but we talk about, you know, like survivor record. It's another survivor, yeah, record. survivor record. Well done, sir. Um, we talk about like this rider die alliance, which, you know, we, we would see Jesse and Cody working together and they're like, well, should we loop in Gabler? Yeah. He'll probably work with us, but we didn't see much. And it seems like this was a pretty important part of the, of the season. Uh, can you go back and, and recap how that came together and, and how you, you three work together? Gordon, I'm glad you brought that up. Rider die was probably the most important alliance I was in, in the game. Um, when Cody walked up to me and, and invited me to be part of that trio, we had a really heartfelt, you know, our, our Viking handshake and we uh, looked each other in the eye. And at that point we were bonded and I had, you know, another relationship from early on where I'd, I'd established myself with Cass, Carla and James. And then of course I'm with the Baca boys too. So by it was a smart move for Cody and Jesse to bring me in because I could bring them information, information, just like trust is the currency of survivor. So by me, I could bring them information. Like I, I told them before we were going in that when we split into two teams and the peanut butter and jelly challenge, and when Owen and Noel orchestrated that blind side on James, I let them know, I'm like, James is going to be sitting there when we walk into final tribal. He's going to be in there. Or in final tribal. We walk into tribal. James will be sitting there. So we should think about that. And that information was accurate uh, because I knew what was going on with Owen and other things. So I think being in the know and having people put information through me was very powerful. And it allowed me to, to, to be and in that ride or die. We were like this trio they could pick where to go. And I'm not saying I was running ride or die, uh, but I was certainly influencing it at times and giving information all the time. And it helped us get deeper in the game until we got to a spot where we could strike. What was the strategy? There was a point where it seemed like you were outing uh, Jesse and Cody to Carla. What was the strategy behind that move? So part of that was um, in all honesty, um, me, outing them to 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 Carla right because to, to point it out to them but also it's a way for me to say hey I'm not with these guys but I see them as a threat what do you think and then they she could tell me what's going on with her and then I could go back and talk to them and come back and you know the same thing goes where one of the one of the uh, clips they just released like after it wasn't in the show but it was like the extra extra that was one of the extras um me around a campfire with Jesse and Cassidy, we're sitting there talking, eating some rice. And I was like, you know, Jesse, you're playing a great game. All three of us are playing three individual different games, Cassidy. And, but you know, Jesse, you're kind of in Cody's shadow right now. And Cassidy, you're kind of in Carla's shadow right now. So by me saying that and planting seeds, it doesn't need to be my idea. If, it, if I can get them to be their idea, but they do, they push it forward. I still win. And that's how it worked. So there was a lot of seeding going on and subtleties that um, really advanced my game. I, I tell you, you jumped on my next question because that that moment was ah, the, the chef's kiss of all chef's kisses because and, and people should consider this going forward because it's what a wonderful way to break up duos by saying, hey, if you go to the end with this person, you've got the exact same story. So and it seemed like it paid dividends several times down the line. So kudos to you, sir. Gordon, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. You know, I tend, I tend you, to you be. go in there and, and you, you plant those seeds and you, you know, and they start to, and these are smart players. Everybody this season, that's the beauty of season 43. Everybody was a fan. Everybody played their heart out. 
And we, that's why some of the, the tribal councils early were a little bit, you know, like, well, I, you know, they were, we weren't saying as sharp a words as we could have because people are smart. The shot in the dark's out there. Idols and advantages are out there. You want to send people home with them in their pocket. And for the most part, except for Jesse, uh, we did that. So we do a word association here to get to know your tribe mates a little bit better. I'll give you someone's name. Give me the first word, a couple words that pops into your head. And uh, let's start off with Jesse. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Um, you know, Jesse, golly, man, I know you wanted me to be fast with this word association, but I know these people so well. There's so many words. I mean, he's a great father. He's a loyal guy he's a hero a hero he's a hero go. and don't feel tied into a single word if you got a couple words i want to hear them uh let's try carla man carla's a warrior that's easy warrior okay ryan heart of gold he's a giver okay mariah mariah rainbow queen she was um i only knew her for you know about a week right you know maybe f three four days but she she fought hard. She was just she was very positive. She was she was just great energy, great energy. I don't know. Okay, Dwight. Smart. Uh, Janine. Kind. Ellie. Friend. Have you heard from Ellie since your win? Talked to her for an hour yesterday. Nice. Okay. Ellie and I are close. Uh, uh, in the game, we were we were adversaries. We didn't start out that way. We became that way, and it was uh, one of the biggest adversaries, uh, adversarial you know relationships in the game. And I had to get her out before she got on the jury, which is why in the middle of my sandwich at Merge Feast, I just had to kind of pull the pin and throw that grenade out there as I was eating my sandwich because she had to go because she was going to be you know it was me or her. She's smart. She's cool. People like her. And, you know, she had to go. It, it, like, and as hungry as you must have been, that must have been a big deal to get you to put down a sandwich uh, to make that statement. It was. It was, you know, that was, it wasn't as wild cardy as it may have seemed. I've been waiting. Think about it, Gordon. I've been waiting 10 days to drop that. 10 days. I knew all that information. And I said nothing about it until we were all together with new friends. And, hey, when you get to the merge, the first name that pops up is usually the name that sticks. So I was waiting till the right time. Carla brought it up. Hey, while we're here, we should start talking about some strategy. Uh, Ryan said we should all be together as a seven. People weren't buying that. And I was like, let's throw out this bomb there. But Ellie, Ellie's, Ellie's good people. Okay. Uh, getting back into word association, let's try Noel. Oh, my gosh. A superstar. Just superstar. I mean, she's somebody... From day one, let me tell you a story. So we're sitting there on top of those big 40-foot blocks floating in the ocean, and I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to dive or do a pencil off the top of this thing. And Noel is like the, the block next to me. She rips off her leg, and she's like, and I'm like, okay, I'm diving. So That's she, so metal. She, That's so uh, metal. She, uh, so metal. She's so metal. I'm Maybe that's what it is. Maybe metal. Maybe nice. metal is is Noel. She's metal. All right, we gotta tighten this up. We're running out of time. Uh, Sammy. Sammy, uh, partner. Okay. Cody. Partner. Who? Cody. Oh, cowboy. All right. Uh, Cassidy. Shark. Fox. Shark. Okay. And uh, let's finish off with uh, Owen. The big O, you know, the lovable curmudgeon really nails him down because he is uh, all of that. But he's a super fan. I think he's next to get in line. If Jeff ever decides to retire, I think Owen is the ticket because Owen is the best narrator I've seen on the show. He's such a fan and he's so good. I'd, be up, for, I'd be up for that. All right. Before I let you go, heading into these big challenges, I know you've got certain metal songs running through your brain. What's your what's your metal soundtrack when you're heading into one of those challenges? There was one every song before I went in there. It was For Whom the Bell Tolls by Metallica. That's what we thought about every time I walked into the ring. You betcha. Into the ring. Love it. Um, Gabler, st I'm still shocked. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> Viking handshake to you, my friend. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, buddy. Yes, sir, Gordon. Appreciate right. you, buddy. Have a great night, man.
YouTube, man. Thank you. <laughs>